Planning what and how you're going to teach is a powerful tool for improving your students' results, as well as generating more demand for your teaching, which means boosting the financial success of your music teaching business if you're a private studio teacher, and making your work significantly more satisfying. Watch to the end to learn how. I strongly recommend it to all teachers, including private instrumental teachers. I'm Saul Richardson, and welcome to Teaching Jazz, where I make videos about music education. One of the most effective techniques you can use is to plan units of work for your students. A unit of work is a series of teaching and learning activities, usually based around a concept or a skill. It introduces the topic and then takes the student through a planned sequence of activities that's designed to help them learn and practice it. To get started with planning a unit of work, ask yourself five basic questions. First, what do I want the student to achieve at the end of the unit of work? Second question, what skills or concepts does it involve? Third question, in what order will it be best to work through these skills or concepts? Number four, what activities can I work through with the student or class to help them develop each skill or concept? And five, how will I know at the end that they've learnt the skill or concept? You might want to estimate the amount of time you'll set aside for each activity. Then you can teach the material in the order that you planned. Your teaching should follow a logical sequence designed to build knowledge or technique cumulatively over time. Here's an example of a unit of work about teaching improvisation in a Dorian mode. Goal. The student will be able to confidently improvise in a conventional jazz style over a minor seven chord using a Dorian scale. They will play with a strong tone, will incorporate phrases of various lengths into their playing, and will use a variety of rhythms. Concepts. Fingering for the Dorian mode in several, if not all, keys. It's a distinctive pattern of sounds. Phrases are relatively self-contained ideas, like a sentence. Phrases come in different lengths. Jazz musicians use a variety of different rhythms when they improvise. Always play with a good, strong tone, unless you're deliberately trying to achieve some special effect. Sequencing for this unit of work. One, the Dorian scale is a distinctive pattern of sounds. Two, fingering. Three, rhythmic variety. Four, Phrasing. Tone is an ongoing concept taught from the very beginning and constantly reinforced through every activity we take a student through. Okay, here are some possible teaching and learning activities. This could, these could go over three 30 to 45 minute lessons. Some students, of course, will need more or less time. Lesson one will be activities one to three. Lesson two will be revision and then activities three and four. Lesson three will be revision and then activity four again, but in more detail. Student listens to part of Miles Davis's So What? The piece, particularly during Davis's solo, is an exploration of the sound of the scale against a single chord. Maybe play another recorded tune. Also, definitely demonstrate on your own instrument. Activity two. Teach the student how to play the scale, preferably in more than one key. If they're a very inexperienced player, it might be slow and halting at first, but that doesn't matter. Everything they play, everything they play will be like that at first, but it will improve over time. Activity three, ask the student to improvise using only crotchets, quarter notes, then only minims or half notes, then only quavers, that's eighth notes, then triplets, 
and so on. Then have them solo using different combinations of rhythms. Point out that jazz players tend to use mostly quavers when they improvise. Use mostly quavers, but other rhythms as a contrast. If there's no rhythmic contrast, the solo is likely to become boring. This assumes that you've already taught the student what improvisation is and how to start doing it um, in a previous lesson. Otherwise, you'd, you'd need to do that first. Activity four. Explain that phrases in music can be long, medium, or short in length. Jazz musicians use a variety of phrase lengths to create contrast and interest in their improvisations. Have the student play for one bar, then rest for one bar. This is a one bar phrase. Repeat with other lengths of phrase and other lengths of silence between phrases. Aim to have the student improvise using a variety of different phrase lengths, then have them incorporate rhythmic variety, etc. This could complete the basic introduction to the Dorian mode for a beginning improviser. The next step might be to teach them a tune using the Dorian, uh, perhaps so what, but there are, there are lots of others. Um, chameleon's another one that they often enjoy, especially kids, um, where they can use an all Dorian solo. It might be a good idea then to move on to something new. Keeping things moving keeps the lesson fresh and keeps the lesson interesting for the student. Revisit the Dorian mode again later though to introduce further concepts and to, and to improve their performance with it. Assessment in this unit of work is really a constant ongoing process. Assessment means checking that a student has understood or can perform what you're teaching. We might do this through a combination of observing, listening and asking questions to check their progress. Most of the time in private lessons, assessment is constant and it allows for instant feedback that's perfectly tailored to what the individual student needs. And it's one of the great benefits of one-on-one -on -one teaching. Extension activities with the Dorian mode in this example might be melodic development, using and transposing motifs, solo structure, rhythmic displacement, repetition, sidestepping. Whatever you do, keep it appropriate to the age and stage of the student. Some points to remember and mistakes to avoid. No student, no student is going to sound like a professional player right away. At first, they usually sound pretty juvenile, but they improve over a long time, just like you did, just like I did. One of the most absurd mistakes a teacher can make is to drill a basic concept or skill to death, thinking that if the student doesn't sound like a pro, then they haven't learned it. Just because they don't sound like you yet doesn't mean that they haven't learned it. Check that they understand it and then move on. They'll probably take as long as you did to start sounding good. Don't expect perfection from a student because that's not realistic. Expect approximation and then consolidation and improvement, and then fluency or mastery. This can take weeks, months, or years. Get the student sounding close to what you want or better than they were, and then move on. Come back to it later if needs be. It's vital to plan what you're doing with each student and makes your teaching far more effective and efficient. It also keeps the student coming back, coming back for more lessons. Another mistake teachers can make is to make up the lessons as they go along, or maybe even just doing the same thing with every student on a given day, and then the next week doing something unrelated. Don't just do the first thing that comes into your head. Plan individual, sequenced instruction for each student. Use planning. Planning whole units of work does take a bit of time, but you only really need to do it once. When you have a unit prepared, you can reuse it each time you teach the same topic to other students in the future. Just make sure that you always adjust the material and activities to match the age, level, and the needs of each individual student. 
Planning is a powerful tool for ensuring that our teaching is effective and efficient. The better we plan, the better our students will perform and the more they'll achieve. This is good for them and good for us. When our students do well, they keep paying for lessons, they attend regularly, they practice and they're motivated. Word spreads quickly about who's a good teacher and about who's slack. So unleash the power of planning to make your teaching more satisfying and more financially rewarding.